Hi, my name is Ben Han. And I'm Lucas Hickok. I was a screenplay adapter for Grendel, the movie. My job was to get the novel written by John Gardner and create a film that reflects all the messages that Mr. Gardner portrayed. You know, critics can always say that this film doesn't follow exactly like the novel, but personally, I don't take that as a valid argument. The purpose of a film is to portray raw emotion through a different medium. Of course, it won't follow the book to the very word, but that wasn't our intention at all. Yes, regardless, I still feel that we were very close uh, in following the novel. Uh, as the director and producer, I kept all the actors on task in order to express their true talents to the highest degree of professional performance. Our star actor, Nicholas Blausch, truly captured the inner conflict burning in Grendel. When we wrote the script, we tried our best to uh, capture both his sensitive nature as a rejected soul, yet also as a destructive monster bent on taking revenge against mankind. This inner struggle could not be captured in just mere words. It was Nick's acting that truly brought out something incredible. Not to mention the great acting of Drew Banker as Beowulf. You know, obviously he seemed much more cold, calculating, even aggressive, almost malicious. This is a dramatic shift from his initial heroic characterization in the Beowulf movie. Even past the great actors, uh, it's important to highlight our inspiration. Back in high school, both Lucas and I took a course called American Literature. Uh, there we didn't just read books, we felt the books. And our professor, Mrs. Lanza, allowed us to read a book that we could choose on our own. So we chose Grendel. And needless to say, we realized our dream to create this movie masterpiece. Yes. However, although this movie is our true life's goal, this isn't the first movie we've done. Yeah, there was uh, Shawshank Redemption with Tim Robbins, he was pretty good. Uh, Apollo 13, and recently The Hunger Games. Uh, that was a movie about an epic battle between 24 kids. Uh, back to the topic. So, uh, without further ado, we will show you a sneak peek at the film with the trailer of the Grendel movie. among the Danes. Reputation from what? Either you will die, or I will die a hero, Grendel. How does one become a hero from dying? That's brainless. Fall, fallow beast. Your sword can't hurt me. I'm impervious to that. Die. Die. I will tear you back to Hrothgar, and you'll be a rocker. Get up. Kill me, please! I beg of you, kill me now! Come on! No, I must die a hero!
Get on the ground. Feel the ground. Wow, that was fun! Uh, obviously the trailer is only scratching the surface of Grendel the movie. Yes, we'll be touching more on that subject at the Oscars. We'd like to elaborate on some of the elements of Grendel the novel that we've incorporated into the full movie. First off, the Shaper has a profound effect on the characterization of Grendel. Now the Shaper's job is essentially a glorified storyteller. Yeah, he tells stories through song, which boasts of Hrothgar's greatness. Of course, Grendel overhears these tales and begins to envy mankind. The lack of interaction and warmth in his life illustrates him as a very sad creature, imprisoned in solitude. Again, this reflects the internal struggle that Grendel suffers. Internally, of course. Yes, at one point, Grendel meets a pessimistic dragon that believes that human values are essentially worthless. This dissipates his inner conflict as he now makes the decision to terrorize the humans who have caused him so much pain. Branching off that, another major theme within this novel is the pain of isolation. Due to Grendel's disgusting physical appearance, he is rejected by mankind in full. He is forced into a position where man can only see him as a monster. So, he does the only thing he can do, become a monster. I hope you guys saw in the trailer that Grendel has both a fierce exterior to conceal a softer interior. I think that's called reaction formation in the field of psychology. The thing about this film versus our last movie Beowulf is that it focuses more on the psychological aspects of the story. Lucas and I both really appreciate Nathaniel Hawthorne's efforts in his famed Scarlet, and in this novel, he captures readers even though there isn't much physically occurring. Yes, there are no epic battles with tons of gore, yet Hawthorne is able to draw in his readers through psychological thriller. Uh, in a way, we focus on Grendel's fear, his mockery of Unferth, and his suffering at the hands of Beowulf in order to de delve deeper into the mindset of Grendel and the humans. Which brings us to the greater conflict, society versus chaos. Grendel, as a wild beast living in the forest, needs chaos as an outcast that can never be accepted in society. But the humans want a fixed orderly society as we see in their construction of the Mead Hall in order to gain power, control, wealth, land, and all earthly goods that we associate with the Anglo-Saxon culture. Grendel's attack on the Mead Hall it, it works on two different levels. On the surface, it is his way of fighting back against the humans who tried to hurt him. In a deeper sense, he's destroying order to put all of humanity into his world of chaos and disorder. What was the hardest part of the film? Probably dressing up Nicholas. Uh, talk about your prima donna. I think at one point he spit in my face. I am there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh! Oh! Did you get it? <laughs> oh, my face! Oh! Yes, although his acting was great, he was a total diva. Total prima donna. A little bit of bleach day sass.
Oh, that would be my, my phone. Yes, Nick? No, I'm not going to get you a Diet Dr. Kelp. Here, let's uh, take a question from a fan. How did you guys do the blood effects in the film? Oh, uh, well, we'll just have to take you behind the scenes. Alright, essentially we have these little capsules right there. Nick has one, Emma has one. And Nick had one until he dropped it. I had one too, I had one too. And he had one, there's blood all over his chest, but yeah, his hands are too big. Um, so uh, what they're for, am I filming? Okay, yeah. What they're for is uh, inside them is like fake blood. So when Nick comes and bites on them, uh, they'll explode it in their mouth and it'll look like they're bleeding from the neck and mouth. All right. This is gonna be gorgeous. Another question? How many people did it take to create this masterpiece? Oh, upwards of 10, 15, 20,000? 20,000. Uh, the yeah. hardest part was filming the arrival of the Geats. Oh my goodness. The water was around 40 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's what happens when you film in Denmark. Yeah. Oh my god. All right, you guys need to go a little bit more in the water. No, dude. No, 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 guys, guys, there's a little bit more in the water. Walk behind you, man. Maybe have my hands behind my back. Oh my god, it's cold. No, 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 no just, just get a little bit more in the water. Need to do no, 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 just back up. No. Just guys, guys, come on, come on, let's be real. I know we're fine. Dude, I'm not even in. Just a little bit. Just back oh up in the water. Oh my gosh. It doesn't. Go. Okay, see, the bottom of your shirts are already wet, so back up into the water. Oh god. Guys, come on. It doesn't matter. Go, oh. guys, come on. Like you actually have no idea how cold it is. It's <laughs> <laughs> go. Guys, guys, come on. Don't come out of the water. It's, just hit me. it's so cold. Get into the water. Oh I need to take All a break, right. and then we can plan this. We're gonna come out and play. Oh my god. Well, look at the time. Uh, George is throwing a party at his summer villa in Italy. Oh, Mr. Lopez, what a hoot. Oh, no, no, no. It's the Clooney's tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for watching, and uh, that's enough of us. Uh, I'm Ben Han. And I'm Lucas Hickok. Thank you. We love you. We love you.